Welcome back guys. Today we're going on a bit of a ride and we're going to talk about a different bike for around here and that is the new Atherton AM130. So Atherton bikes, if you don't know about them, is an English brand ran by the Atherton family, all downhill racing champions essentially. They've been in the scene for a very long time and a few years ago they started their own brand. They started up with a downhill bike and an enduro bike obviously more suited for their main disciplines. And this was based around the Robotic Bicycles brand. Now, Robotics came about, was pretty quiet, announced what they were doing, then kind of disappeared. And then later Atherton announced their bikes with essentially Robotics design. The really cool thing about this bike is it is a 3D printed bike. Obviously not the whole thing. This means it comes in up to 22 different sizes. Just the AM130 comes in 22 different sizes. So that is a huge amount of options for everyone out there. So you will definitely find a bike which is a perfect fit for you. With aluminum or carbon base, you're just kind of limited to how many they can pump out and it doesn't make sense to make this many. When it's simply 3D printing select parts to allow them to change them on the fly per bike, it gives you this opportunity to build up to 22. Obviously, they could potentially build unlimited, but you gotta you gotta call it somewhere, right? So the Atherton Trail Bike is based on the DW6 suspension platform, so it is a super lightweight bike, obviously being all 3D printed. But this is that downcountry geometry, so slack and easy to handle the bigger stuff, because that's really where the Athertons come from. So it's definitely still a downwards pointing bike, but. It is now a lightweight geometry and it is designed to pedal a little bit more efficiently. They're announcing that it's all beating every pass and certification for Cat 4 Enduro and Cat 5 Downhill from the EFBE, which is like an international standards council for bicycle standards. Kind of weird, but essentially they all have kind of specs under like the UCI rules and stuff like that and other large corporations which control racings it has all that kind of stuff the dw6 suspension is dave weagles so he builds a custom tuned shock and linkage which present which will provide like a really good small bump compliance it kind of works like a combination of trex active braking pivot so that lower section of the rear chain stay is not fully attached and pivots up a little bit similar to a VPP suspension like Santa Cruz is using, but all in the rear end. So it, it works really well. It's just designed in a very small way. It's honestly a very clever looking suspension. It does look like a VPP ABP, which would be a virtual pivot point active braking pivot, which is kind of crazy. So Obviously, with all these tests and 3D printed parts, they're able to really develop these bikes fast and go through many different variations before falling upon the end one. Obviously, it's going to be super personalized for you with all those. It is designed for like really good handling and really good confidence downhill, but still a fast pedaling efficiency. It is carbon, so it's a little complicated how it all works. Sections of it are a kind of carbon chassis built together, 3D printed. Other parts are like a carbon tube. It's really uniquely built and yet somehow very simple looking. And it, it's cool that they're able to do this. This is a no threaded parted bike, which is kind of interesting. So they're saying pretty much nowhere is a thread. The only place that is threaded is a bottom bracket. So I don't even understand how that works. I have like all the suspension stuff must be built some other way. I'm not really sure how it all holds together. They don't really explain. They just tell you that, that it doesn't have any parts, which is cool. They're one of the companies jumping on this port to port cabling. So all the internal cables run through a device on the inside to stop with uh, rattling you know like an internal sleeve so it's going to be a nice quiet bike and then they do have an email and call service to help really decide what size you are 
With these bikes though, being that they're 3D printed, it does not make them any cheaper. It's not like 3D printed homes where they're just whipping together a simple bike. They don't have obviously an entry level spec. There is no $3,000 option here. They start at about six and a half thousand pounds. So if you're getting close to eight to 10,000 Canadian dollars and more. Um, so the 6,600 pound one is the AM30.2. This is an entry level one, as you want to call it. Um, you don't really get much choice for frame colors or any of that stuff. You get black and then just the raw carbon. And then you can right now only choose one graphic to go on it. I don't know if you don't choose one, do you get it plain? I'm not 100% sure, but I think you can only choose one. Essentially, this DW6 suspension platform looks really cool and I think will work for a really comfortable ride, yet still being able to control that back end superbly and keeping a lot of braking power. The geometry is definitely in that top fuel kind of design, so very down country. It's meant to be fast on the downhill, similar to a Norco Optic as well in all that kind of geometry. With the AM130.2, you are getting obviously something cool like a SRAM GX drivetrain. So it's not like you're getting an entry level part spec by any means. You're getting a pike on the front. So they're really parting it together very, very well. And you do get Stan's Arch S2 wheels. And they've put that together with a Continental Zynotal tires. I don't even know how to say that. Essentially, they chose the highest end parts you can get. Like I said, the fork is a pike. It's the Select Charger RC. The rear shock is the Deluxe Ultimate RTC. So it's super high end that way. Fox transfer, 31.6 seat post. It is obviously using the SRAM Universal Derailer Hanger, SRAM cassettes, all that GX is fully matching. Headset is a simple FSA trail with a 40 mil stem. 800 mil bars so it's going to work really well i don't know what the grips are they call them a lock on traction but i've never really heard of that g2 four piston brakes so you're going to do really well with 180 mil rotors yeah so this is a cool bike i really like the idea what they're doing it definitely sounds like they're overpowering the downhill part of it really focusing on the down country part of it but they're also understanding that a lot of people are gonna be riding these bikes, not just in an enduro or downhill theme. So they needed to get on that trail kind of everyday stuff. Geometry looks wise, it looks like a steep head tube. Without riding it, it's hard to know exactly how it will handle. But I think they've gone after that Norco Optic, Trek top fuel kind of level of bike. And it's gonna be really, really cool and very maneuverable, very fast but point it downhill and you're gonna have a lot of power under that. It's gonna be pretty impressive. The highest end one right now you can get is the AM130.1. This thing obviously is just well specced out. You are getting some crazy parts, X01 all around. This is still interestingly enough, the wired one or cable, not wired. It's not wireless electronic and you are still at that, that 7,300 pounds. So a decent amount, but all ultimate suspension from Rock Sharks, the Pike and the Soup Deluxe Ultimate. X01 for all the setup, so chain, everything. Brakes as well on this model have obviously jumped up to the RSC G2s from SRAM. Same size disc rotor at 180, same size tires and all that kind of stuff. The wheel set does jump up to the Stan's Arch Mark IV. 29er with boost front and rear and I like how they've paired it with the Renthal fat bar carbon with a bit of a rise to it so it's just gonna put you in that comfy but downhill ready position if you haven't seen the Atherton bikes I definitely check it out I'd love some reviews or opinions on them what you think of all the sizes like it's crazy the fine details of the size geometry is like there's just too much to say like between it they call it from a 410 mil reach all the way up to a 530 mil reach 
with 10 mil increments all the way up, but it doesn't change in every single one. So your reach doesn't necessarily change, but your seat tube and your head stack and all that kind of stuff can tweak. So you can really get a full custom bike without fully customizing it and building it yourself. And I think that's a cool little feature that they're really gonna nail. You do pay a bit of a premium for it, but it's it's not like you're paying that much more. They just don't have an entry level bike. And I don't think they'd be able to with the amount of customization that they're doing. They pretty much have to pair it with a nice part spec and overpower it. So if you've not checked out these guys, I would definitely strongly suggest it. It's AttertonBikes.com. You can build your own bike. There's not a huge amount of customization yet. I have to assume it's coming. I have to assume they'll be doing custom paint jobs and different things like that. Their builder is basic, but ready for more stuff. And I'd really like some opinions on this DW6 suspension stuff. It seems like a very clever, but very simple setup. And I think it's gonna make for a very good trail bike. Atherton bikes might be in on something here. And I think it's someone we should watch out for in the future as they expand. They just need to somehow get a bit more mass produced and potentially bring that price down just a smidgy. Maybe only do like 15 sizes instead of 22, you know? That might help simplify things. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy the ride. Talk to you later. Thank you.